As has been reported by lots of media worldwide, Porsche has officially begun producing synthetic fuels. Why are they doing this? Is it actually logical? And does it make any sense? Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans, and I'm coming to you from Newcastle in Australia. Yes, there is a Newcastle here in Australia. It's not the original Newcastle, but here in Australia, we like to name places after other places in the world, often where people came from originally. So there's a lot of that. We have a lot of names here in Australia from the UK, Ireland, Scotland, yeah, you know, Europe, places like that. Porsche officially began producing synthetic fuel at its e-fuel production facility in Chile. It's open, it's producing carbon neutral gasoline. Is there really such a thing as carbon neutral gasoline? Well, Porsche says there is. The problem here is, convincing the European Union that it is actually carbon free. They don't seem to agree. Regardless, Porsche announced it had finished investing more than 100 million US dollars into building the plant and it's now officially open in Punta Arenas, Chile and producing stuff that can go into cars that don't yet exist. Anyhow, Porsche says it will produce carbon neutral gasoline that will fuel the combustion powered Porsche for years to come, both on the road and on the track. To signify this occasion, Chilean Energy Minister Diego Pardao fueled a Porsche 911 with the first synthetic fuel from the plant. And Porsche is one of the few automakers heavily invested in the development and production of synthetic fuels, or e fuels as they're commonly called. Now, I've talked about synthetic fuels previously here on the channel. But the basic principle is creating synthetic gasoline using hydrogen from water and carbon dioxide already present in the environment. It's not cheap. By using carbon already present in the atmosphere though, the gasoline emits only the carbon used to create it. Nothing more, nothing less, says Porsche, resulting in a net zero carbon footprint. Now the reality is, this isn't entirely true. Because what happens where do Porsche get this carbon dioxide that's already in the environment? Well, clearly they're taking it from one country and importing it to another. So the European Union might, might think, well, okay, Porsche, you're taking carbon dioxide out of the environment in South America and you're bringing it to Europe and burning it here in a dense population area. So actually, yes, it does have an exhaust, these cars running in these vehicle, running this fuel, it still produces emissions that cause cancer. So no, it's not carbon neutral if you're in Europe. Sure, maybe it is if you're in South America. I mean, it's carbon negative if you're in South America. But if you live in Europe and Porsche takes that carbon out of the atmosphere, wherever it is, and brings it to your doorstep and then you breathe in, I'm pretty sure you're not going to be thinking it's carbon neutral. So this whole idea of carbon neutral synthetic fuels, in my opinion, is really a misnomer. So why e-fuels? While Porsche is fully committed to e-mobility, at least they say, the plan is for 80% of its vehicles sold in 2030 to be purely electric and the rest of them to be, well, these kinds of cars. The automaker understands that the purchase of a new EV does not mean the ICE or internal combustion engine vehicle will suddenly disappear, in their opinion. According to Michael Stein, a member of the Executive Board for Development and Research at Porsche, there are currently more than 1.3 billion vehicles with combustion engines worldwide. Many of these will be on the roads for decades to come, they say. And e-fuels offer the owners of existing cars a nearly carbon neutral alternative. Now, personally, I think it's going to be a challenge for people to find gasoline in 20 years time. I mean, realistically, how easy is it for you to find a Nokia 3310 today? You can get them, but they're not everywhere. It's not easy, right? When new technology comes along, it's going to be charging points everywhere. You can charge your, your EV at your house. You can charge it now. Pulp, they're going to install charging points on streets, all over streets all around the world, on electricity poles, on actual side curb walk curbs. They're all over colleges. They're at station. They're at shops. They're at supermarkets. They're going to be ubiquitous. They're going to be everywhere. And eventually, most of the world's petrol gasoline stations will shut down, meaning it'll be harder and harder to fuel your old gas clunker. However, 
Steiner from Porsche estimates that even in 10 to 20 years, the number of ice-powered vehicles on the road will still be more than 1 billion. All of these need to be fueled somehow, and Porsche postulates that these could be fueled in a carbon-neutral fashion long before political mandates require most new cars to be fully electric. Now, there is a big problem with this idea. It's ludicrous. It's so ludicrous that Porsche are smoking some serious, seriously good crack if they think that many, that more than a billion people are going to power their cars with Porsche synthetic fuels. The reason being, it's five times more expensive than gasoline. Doesn't Porsche realize the majority of these vehicles are actually going to be in lower, poorer countries, what we used to call third world countries. They think a billion people in these countries are going to be willing to pay five times more for gasoline to run old clunkers than just going and buying a new electric motorcycle for $1,000. That, in my opinion, is utterly, utterly ludicrous. They cannot afford double the price, let alone five times the price. However, why choose Chile? Well, integral to the production of synthetic fuel is the harvesting of hydrogen from water by means of electrolysis. This uses a lot of energy. This is an energy intensive process and the carbon neutrality of the fuel hinges heavily on the step of the production cycle being fueled by renewable energy. Chile was selected due to its high winds on a year-round basis. It's estimated that 270 days of the year see very high wind levels, enabling wind turbines to operate at full capacity. The wind in Chile enables up to four times more renewable energy than other sites around the world. There's also a lot of sun there as well. So how much fuel can Porsche produce and what will it cost? Well, production of the facility that Porsche have will ramp up starting at 130,000 litres of e-fuel per year, so enough for a few thousand cars, ramping up to 55 million litres or 14.5 million gallons by the middle of the decade, and full production capacity of 550 million litres or 145 million gallons by 2027. You can see Porsche are really going all in on this. This one facility alone is nowhere near enough, though, to meet global or even American demand. In the US alone, more than 1,000 times that fuel figure is used. More than 1,000 times, just in the United States. However, this is the first facility of many. Porsche are going to go all in on this. Steiner says that highly innovative fuels, or HIFs, one of Porsche partners alongside Siemens and ExxonMobil, has a plan for more and bigger plants going forward, of which Porsche is a backer. Porsche believes it can become the next, the next big oil company. It's just going to call itself Renewable Oil Company. We're going, to re we're going to remove carbon from one place and put it in another where people can breathe it in. In my opinion, this is completely illogical. And I can't believe Porsche think this is seriously going to work. There is no way known the European Union will actually agree to this happening in 2030 and beyond. Zero chance. But getting back to the cost, Porsche's e-fuel is not for sale currently to the public. Instead, the plant currently supplies the Porsche Mobile One Super Cup and Porsche Experience Centers globally as so-called lighthouse projects. The fuels require no modification and are a direct gasoline substitute. However, even when they're available to the public, they will not be cheap, as I said before. Porsche is targeting production cost of $2 per litre by the time production ramps up in many years' time. That's two US dollars per litre, but that's their end goal. That's a really a fanciful figure that's never going to be achieved. And if it is, it'll take them at least 10 years to get there. However, that's merely the price of production. That doesn't include making a profit or shipping it all around the world or even having a gasoline station to sell it in, or local taxes or many other factors which will affect the price, meaning the likely end price would be around 10 US dollars per litre. Porsche claim that scaling up production could lead to a reduction in cost, but even that might only reduce the cost by around 20% to say 8 US dollars per litre. How many people do you think would be willing to pay that? Maybe supercar drivers beyond that, I don't think there's going to be much of a market for it. 
Now, the strange thing is, Porsche themselves don't really seem convinced that this is even going to work themselves. The fact that they're saying that 80% of the cars they manufacture in 2030 will be electric and only 20% will be gasoline powered means they're not really convinced of this project at all. That's what I think anyway. Let me know if you agree. Representatives from Porsche have made clear that this fuel is a means of supporting older and existing Porsche products, not a means of escaping electrification. The good news is that these e-fuels are high in quality and fully compliant with all current legislation, say Porsche. While there are loopholes in EU legislation for potentially using e-fuels instead of EVs in the future, nothing has been finalized. In fact, the European Union has not agreed to these fuels being used beyond 2035 when the sales of gasoline powered cars are banned. When quizzed on whether the combustion of e-fuels results in emissions that hamper air quality, such regulations have seen vehicles banned from or heavily taxed when entering major European city centers. Steiner said that the fuel's exhaust emissions are often better than ambient air in those cities. Now, he didn't provide any proof for this, for this fact. There was no research, no pointing to studies of any kind. I don't know where he comes up with this information because he's already admitted that, yes, they do produce emissions just like a petrol car, just like a gasoline car does. So, yeah, that sounds pretty ridiculous to me. Porsche say that the opening of this production facility in Chile is a massive step towards an alternative means of production of, to electrification, and they plan on ramping this to a huge level. While cost parity, of course, will never be achieved, synthetic fuels, they claim, will keep alive the prospect and the history of combustion for future generations. Personally, I think this is a total Disney fantasy. I mean, maybe Disney wouldn't fantasize about this, but you get my point, right? It's pure fantasy to think in 50 years time, our grandchildren are going to give two craps about whether or not we use gasoline powered cars and exactly how crap those cars were in comparison to the brand new technology they'll have in 50 years time from now, which will be utterly mind blowing compared to the rubbish transmissions and antiquated internal combustion engines that we still have today. I'm sorry, but in 50 years time, it will just simply be looked at as old junk. But that's my view. Let me know if you agree or you disagree. Now, interestingly, other companies are gonna join in. Steiner has said that within the Volkswagen Group, several companies are supporting the initiative, likely to be Bentley, possibly even Aston Martin as well, and maybe also Lamborghini. Now, Porsche welcomes other manufacturers joining in with them. They say this will speed up the development and adoption of such fuels, making them more viable for global use where EVs are not a viable cure-all. As you can see, I'm, I think this is a joke. I think it's ridiculous. I'm shocked that Porsche, I mean, the people in Porsche, that they haven't said, um, actually guys, this is make mathematical sense. Just selling it at $10 a liter, make mathematical sense. Think about it this way, right? The cost of energy, once we have renewable energy, well, you can see Germany's gonna be at 90%, Australia's gonna be at 90% by 2030. Most of the developed world will be at 90% by 2035 at the absolute latest, meaning the cost of electricity will be very low. Most countries around the world that have areas, right, that use predominantly renewable energy, the cost of electricity hasn't changed in years. That's how you keep the cost down. But when you have an abundance of renewable energy, which is what will happen, the cost of energy will plummet. Almost everyone is predicting that. That's not a weird thing to say for me. That's not a weird thing being said by some random guy on a YouTube channel. Everyone is in agreement that that will happen. So what does this mean? It means that the cost of this gasoline or this synthetic gasoline will be amazingly huge in comparison to the cost of simply charging your EV. In my opinion, it's ridiculous that this is even happening at all. But honestly, in the end, who cares? I really think it's gonna fail. And I think it's going to be a huge waste of resources from the Volkswagen Group and from Porsche. But that's just my view. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below.